Hello, my name is Boyn. Welcome to the channel. Hope you're having a great day. Um, this is my first video with voice, so it's going to be a little bit awkward. Just bear with me, but I think we'll do fine. So today I would like to show you this little furnace array that we designed behind me. It is, as you can immediately see, a completely different uh, concept to most furnace arrays. And I'll explain why that is. Essentially, this furnace array, instead of your regular furnace array, uh, this furnace array doesn't send your the items to furnaces via minecarts, but instead it sends them through these ice streams, um, where every single furnace will actually receive, and I will show you that, eight items instead of what is usually one when you do it with a minecart. The reason we do that is to actually be able to guarantee that we have pretty much a 100% fuel efficiency um, as long as the amount of items that you smelt is divisible by eight which is not really a big deal uh, because even if it isn't divisible by eight it's only the remainder that actually is the one extra coal that you use so it's, it's not really a problem um this is different to most other furnace arrays where because one item is put in at a time you would need to put in even the the specifically perfectly timed ones you would need to put in a huge amount of items to actually be able to say that it is 100% fuel efficient um i'll say right away this furnace array it really is created to to solve that goal it is not created to be the fastest furnace rate because it really isn't it only operates at four times hopper speed which is fine it's not that slow but it's not as fast as you know some systems if you want a faster rate check out chaos force by repskellion it's a great system um but that system actually has a limitation that you need to smell the full box fuel efficient every single time uh let's see if we can spot an item coming in let's take this furnace right here you'll see as soon as it is done smelting that eight new cobblestone will come in oh and i stopped the chest mine card here but that's okay so eight new uh, cobblestone come in which makes sure that the coal that is just used to smelt these cobblestone will be completely used uh, let me get the minecart rolling there we go to achieve that we have this input system right here uh, which is just your regular chest. You can hook up shulker unloaders to it, although you would have to make a four times shulker unloader, uh, which we plan to do uh, before we actually use this in our SMP. It's not really the point of this video, so it's not part of the this contraption. Uh, what we do then is we unload the chest, we put the items into these four droppers right here, which all spit the items directly into this little column, which is then aligned on four axes, just to make sure that it's always one item entity. And these items are then sent directly into the ice streams that I just showed you earlier. We have a alternating system here to make sure that uh, the system is actually distributing the items across the four modules. This is mainly because the input is actually much faster than the time it takes for this retraction to happen. So if we were to send everything to one module at once, then this retraction wouldn't happen in time and it would have to slow down the input, which we really didn't want to do. And so what we do instead is we divide it over these four ice streams. They are then pushed along these ice streams. They fall down. They trigger this pressure plate before landing into the hopper underneath. I can click on right now and then landing into the furnace. Then the pressure plate that they landed on, which is right here, triggers a dropper which has a item in it, which basically propagates the signal forward. So that let's see that happening here. Here's the item. When the smeltable lands on top of these pressure plates, that's propagated forwards, which is read by this comparator, turns off this torch retracts this piston, allows this item to fall in. Then it's just having the smelters, the furnaces, I should say, and then 
pretty much the only thing that's actually left is these droppers lines uh, to bring the item back to the beginning so that we can keep on recycling these items. Let's actually put some more items in so I can keep it running. Let's also pick up our items here. There we go. Then other than that, uh, the only redstone actually left here is the locking mechanism. Let's make sure that while the furnace ray is not running, that all these hoppers are locked. Uh, actually, every single hopper used within the entire furnace array is locked when, uh, when it is not running, but a lot of them are unlocked when it is running. The reason we wanted to really to make sure that all these hoppers are locked is because the use case of this system. Generally, especially for, let's say, tech servers or pretty much medium-sized servers that might already have a faster array, this array is mostly meant for when you want to just smelt a couple stacks and not have to input a full box or yeah, use a lot of fuel just to smelt a couple items. Um, this array is mostly meant for the cases which happen a lot that you just went, want to smelt a couple stacks and then get on with your day pretty much. So this furnace array, I'll actually speed it up so it finishes off. Uh, And it's so satisfying to watch. Okay, how many items did I put in there? Okay, there we go. So it's pretty much finished up now. And then as you can see, when it is finished up, all of these furnaces here are hard powered, which also blocks off the only three hoppers per slice uh, within the system. So all of these hoppers are now locked, as well as the hoppers within the inputs uh, are all locked even though I can't remember where. Oh yeah, I the start blocks over here. And then, yeah, pretty much any hopper that you can find is locked in one way or, or another. So let's put some items back in so I can keep explaining the system. There's actually only a couple things left. So we have the fuel chest right here. Nicely spelled fuel, um, which just loads a chest minecart at hopper speed. We really don't need anything more than that because we're so fuel efficient. Uh, that cart then goes on to feed all the furnaces uh, with their respective fuel. It also only runs around while there is actually input in the system. So when there's no items in here, th this cart will not leave. Uh, we have this little lever, but it's really up to you how you do the collection. But we have this little lever here, which instead of spitting the items outside of this uh, slip here, let's say, um, the items are now routed into... You didn't see that? Uh, they are now routed into these chests right here. Then one more interesting thing to talk about is this interesting distribution line that we have on the top here where we make sure that every module actually only gets one out of four um, item batches. And the way we do that is actually very simple. Every time an out item comes through these strip wires, we increment this uh, dropper counter. This one counts to four, three, three, I think. Yeah, this one counts to three. This one counts to two. This one pretty much just counts to one. Uh, and then the last one doesn't really have need to have a counter. And then every time the counter is completely filled, uh, this sticky piston is extended. It's actually budded, um, which allows one item to fall through. We have the string here that detects the item falling through, which actually updates the, the piston which makes it retract again as soon as an item comes in. And then we have another string here where the item that just has fallen through lands in front of the slime block here and is then sent into the respective array. And that's actually pretty much it for this system. Um, I will say uh, this probably was because I was standing there, so I'm just going to pick that up. 
I've never seen that happen before. I'm definitely sure that it's because I was messing around there. Oh, which also desynchronized the machine, so it doesn't look as satisfying anymore. Unfortunate, but happens. Yeah, I've going out 64 in my inventory now. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. It's a neat little contraption. I will leave a world download in the description. Um, I will also say, or I've recently heard that this concept is not actually completely new. Um, told me that a server called Minerva had a really similar concept, but I couldn't find them releasing anything or uh, yeah, any videos or anything about it. So yes, we're technically the first ones to do this. Uh, we might not be, uh, it's really a simple concept, so it doesn't really matter. It's just the nice idea that we had to play around with and it worked out and it's pretty cool and I want to show you guys, so that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, don't dig too deep of it. So uh, I will also say that this whole machine, or actually a lot of the design process of this machine was uh, done on stream, which where I try to explain as I'm working how, what challenges I'm facing, what way of working I have, and just in general, yeah, try to have a good time on stream while uh, working on these machines. So if you want, you can definitely hang out. You can find my Twitch link in the description. Just give me a follow and then next time I go live, you'll get a notification. And if you want, you can always give me some recommendations about this system or any other systems I've worked on. I'm having a video come up soon about a unloading array, which is pretty cool, although it doesn't really work yet, but it's secret. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out uh, when it comes up or check my Twitch channel out when, whenever you want, really. I'll be streaming hopefully somewhere this week. I don't have a schedule, but uh, yeah, you will be notified when it happens. So there's that. So thank you very much for watching. Um, and yeah, again, have a good day.